Marsha writes, my husband is in late stage dementia at age 67, hasn't spoken in two years, and is now living separately from me. Grief is a dominant presence in my life. I do have brief moments of joy when we are sharing something by our presence alone. I attempt to take in the good and let it settle as you suggest, and it helps. I guess my question is, when the proportion of emotion is so obviously tilted towards sadness for hours, weeks, months at a time, what have you found in research as the impact on a person's health and well-being? And what suggestions would you have to maximize health and happiness over the long, long haul of a journey such as ours? Well, um, first off, I feel for you. And um, one of the things that I think is really useful, of course, along the way, is to keep the heart open um, and to stay open to the support and good wishes of others, even if they can't do anything about the objective situation that you're in. Still, we're not meant as very profoundly social human animals. Uh, we're not meant to suffer alone. We're not meant to face uh, challenges and diseases of any kind, including dementia, alone. And so that, that sense of connectedness with others is very important. Research shows that negative experiences, negative, stressful, painful uh, you know, of experiences, particularly ones with emotions like anger or sadness or loneliness, defeat, hurt, uh, frustration, disappointment, loss, grief, depression, etc., etc. It's interesting that there are many more words for emotionally negative experiences in the English language and probably other languages too than there are for positive experiences, which you know speaks to what's called the brain's negativity bias. In any case, those experiences do tend to wear people down. And that's why it's important, I think, to be really kind to ourselves and kind to the body. You know, what Mary Oliver called the poet, I believe, the soft animal of the body. You know, oh, oh, it's been through a lot. Marsha, you've been through so much, and really. And um, yeah, you're hanging in there. Yeah, you're doing the best you can. And yeah, whew, you've really, really, really been through so much, and it's not over yet. So that will have an impact. Critically important point, separating from the experience in some sense, or being able to be with it, better way to put it, in a space of mindful awareness critically important. When we're identified with experiences, when we're hijacked by them, when we're flooded, overwhelmed by them, they tend to get reinforced rapidly into neural structure. That's why developing steadiness of mind as a trait is so, so important. It's so foundational. That's why I made it the first one here, so that we can have these experiences, understandably. I spent a lot of time with both of my parents, especially my father, in the last months of their lives, and um, I would walk out of the hospital just a wash in madness, <laughs> you know, things that were happening. Uh, just, oh, stunned, while at the same time, being able to access with practice a fundamental serenity, you know, underneath it all. The serenity was not about covering over the very understandable outrage, dismay, worry, defeat, sadness, etc., but not having access to that underlying refuge um, is a terrible thing, and having access to it uh, makes all the difference. So first, it's to be able to, you know, disidentify from the experience or to have it be, I think as Pema Chodron puts it, have the sense that you are the sky, as she says, and everything else is just weather. It's clouds moving through. They could be terrible clouds. Uh, there could be a hurricane. And most fundamentally, we are the sky. We are the sky of awareness through which clouds pass. And having a sense of that is really important. It's also extremely important to develop psychological resources of various kinds, including ones that are accompanied typically with a sense of, of enjoyment or positive emotions, to develop resources like self-worth or lovingness, or feeling loved, or feeling your own worth, or a sense of your own um, goodness way deep down inside. As we develop these resources, which include grittier ones like determination and resilience, as we develop these, we're more able to deal with challenges. So I think every day gives us opportunities to grow the good inside. And knowing that we have that opportunity 
is uh, more important than ever, the more we're pushed around by the world around us. Um, and that's, that's why practice inside one's own mind is so critically important. So that, and then last, um, to the extent, as I've said, that a person can really prioritize and protect those, those seconds extending into half a minute, maybe a minute or more in a row, where we just have a sense of letting go, letting down, letting it flow, feeling it on the way out, and as the storm passes, resting in an unconditional, not based on external conditions, an unconditional, authentic sense of underlying peacefulness, acceptance, gratitude for what we've had in this life, um, lovingness, and hopefully some wisdom as well. And that makes all the difference in the world, and that is very, very possible. And I would just challenge people, and I challenge myself, how many seconds a day are you actively practicing inside your own mind? That might simply be just being with what's there in the moment, but you're practicing with it. How much of the time are you deliberately developing and uh, marinating in and establishing in yourself wholesome qualities of mind and heart that you're trying to grow over time? And the good news is the more we do that, the more we hardwire the results into our own nervous system.